community leader Ajay Bhatturia has put up a fantastic event today in honor of Nancy Jackson and it is the first time history has been created in two different ways first that the state department uh, representatives have spoken to the indian media and indian diaspora in silicon valley for the very first time and second that they have announced a very breaking news that there will be a pilot program where the h1b renewal will be done here in us itself the stamping will be done in us itself and uh, the holders will not have to fly back to india and take that pin big congratulations on the Thank success so of this event and the acceptance of the pilot program that you had proposed what are your thoughts no i mean it's a great opportunity for uh, our community leaders uh, you know very very uh, you know uh, our great community leaders who came here today and had a wonderful meaningful conversation on strengthening and deepening india us relationship and uh, taking it forward from people to people us india relationship and uh, we are thankful and grateful the state department and the jackson and team were here so so you know there were several points that were discussed today and uh, at several moments there were um, applauses and uh, smiles on the face of the community leaders and the diaspora who had gathered together what was your best part yeah no i mean uh, i think when nancy and team announced that the uh, h1 visa stamping can be done in us it gives a relief to thousands of h1 workers uh, for whom the community leaders has been uh, fighting for uh, whether uh, the wait times for visa appointments in india has much gone down i think most of the visas except the b1 b2 which has a longer wait time they are still down and people can get visas and come to us uh, the students uh, now can apply for uh, their um, uh, student visa they don't have to wait for 90 days for the college to start they can apply any time after they within one year after they get their uh, admission in the college so there are a lot of things which the state department is working very hard for the community and then there were programs where uh, you know women stem empowerment programs and uh, partnership programs and mentorship programs which our women leaders were very interested in so there's a lot happening i mean wonderful all in all this was a great uh, initiative and a uh, uh, grand success so congratulations to you again and thank you so much for your time in speaking with you india tv yeah, thank you so much for joining you india tv thank you um we have a a couple of t- new exciting things happening that we think will make a difference in wait times. One is that for students, and this is brand new, just happened in the past week, you used to have to wait until 90 days before your program start date to apply for a visa, which meant that everybody who was coming to the United States in September was coming to the embassy in May. Now we have changed that as within 365 days. So wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so as soon as your students get their I-20s <laughs> and their acceptance letters, send them to make an appointment at the at the embassy and and we'll we'll see them. So that was uh, that was a very That's exciting huge, event. That's huge. It, That's it's huge. it is really huge and I think because and India was our number yeah. <laughs> India was our number one source of students last year um to the United States yes. and so we hope that that will continue and that that will ease the burden on some of our colleagues there. Um, Another exciting thing that we're doing is um, we're starting, we call it Project Filio, and the reason we call it that is not just because Filio means brotherly love, but that's actually the visa categories it covers. P-H-I-L-E-O, which are all temporary work visas. And we are going to be starting domestic renewal of those visas. So people who are in the United States on an H-1B or an L. Won't have to go back. Won't have to go back to India. Exactly what I didn't want to say. Wow. We heard you. We heard you. We are listening. This this is a huge, huge deal, I can tell you. The community loves you so much. Everyone, we just had a very grand event by 
Ajay Jain Bhaturia in honor of Nancy Jackson, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State, who has given out several positive initiatives that she has made uh, for immigration, students, and science, technology, space, climate, and so many other fields which will help the Indo-US partnership. We have one of the attendees who has come all the way from Los Angeles, Avinda Chavla, right here with us. Welcome to You India TV with Thank me, Jasleen. And uh, first of all, please introduce yourself to the viewers. Yeah, my name is uh, Avinder Chavla, and I'm an engineer by profession. And uh, lately, in the last three, four years, I got uh, attracted to the politics in the US uh, and uh, joined. Uh, DNC Finance Council where we raise money for President Biden and uh, Honorable Vice President Kamala Harris and also was part of the California Resolutions Committee, uh, California Democratic Party. Uh, it's very, uh, uh, it has been a great honor to work uh, for the Indian communities. Indians have come here and we, we all have, uh, we all have uh, worked hard and now now it's time where we see that we have to give back to the community. Yeah, so it was a fantastic um, roundtable conference today and several community leaders put up some of their questions and were also uh, provided with so many solutions that um, Nancy and her team had given out. What was the most fascinating for you? You know, it was a great event uh, um, hosted by Ajay Bhaturia and his team and uh, Seeing these events where uh, they talk about uh, India and US being the largest democracies and the cultural relationships that we make between the two countries. Like today they talked about the immigration, about the visas, they talked about space, technology and the university exchange program, you know, that is, the, I think, the university exchange program where kids uh, meet each other uh, and uh, exchange come US from here, US. Uh, kids going to India and from India kids coming to US it's a it's a great uh, collaboration where both the countries can uh, can gain from each other we already we always say that US is the largest democracy now India also being the fourth largest economy is coming coming up where the whole world is looking at India and uh, today the program it was very I was very honored to be part of this great event and uh, hopefully these kind of things will continue that will enable both the countries to come closer and uh, and get to know the the relations became becomes more strong absolutely so this was a great move uh, in terms of the us india partnership and uh, we look forward to many more beautiful things uh, especially the pilot program uh, which was different. so the program we hope to be issuing our first visas at the end of the summer in September but we um, we're going to start with a small pilot program not all of the H1B community at the beginning but then we're slowly going to build it up because we have to build an entire consular section in, from scratch and it's going to be the largest consular section in the world will be this one that's taking care of visa renewals and so. it will be stationed in BC we believe so, yeah. Okay. There's still, you know, Congress has some say in where it's going to be. <laughs> but, but for right now, yeah, it will be in D.C. And, okay. and we'll, we're working out arrangements for mailing and, and online payment and all those things. So that is a, that's our, our really super exciting news. And what that means is <coughs> all these efforts that we've been doing means that this year, so far, in this fiscal year, we have adjudicated... 36% more cases than we did in 2019. The wait times are still long and we, our goal is to get them down, but I just hope you understand how important it is to us to do that and we are focusing so much of our efforts and really changing the way we think about adjudications and visas so that we can make it better for India. Awesome. Well, I will say from the very outset of the, of the horrible war that is being um, perpetrated by Putin on Ukraine. We have had um, conversations with India from the beginning. And while we might not always agree in terms of policy steps to take, we agree on basic principles. And we've heard that from the Indian government in terms of talking about territorial integrity, sovereignty, upholding the UN Charter. And we've also seen 
a lot of steps that India has taken in terms of providing humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainian people, which we are very pleased about. Um, and then we saw Prime Minister Modi at the SCO tell Putin in public, this is not a time for war. We agree with all of that. We want to see an end to this conflict too. Um, and so I think on the fundamentals, there's, there's a lot that we agree on. Would we have loved for India have, to have voted yes in the UN with us? Of course, they abstained. So I'm sure very good the reason that Pakistan has been doing. And uh, how the US is trying to combat it so that India becomes a social country. So we are working very closely with India on counterterrorism issues, and particularly at the UN in terms of designations. And I think they're seeing that, and we continue to work closely with India on those issues. So as all of you know, as president of the G20 this year, India will host upwards of 200 meetings around the country. And we very, very, very much look forward to working closely on the shared priorities with India that we have for the G20 this year. A few. <laughs> of course. meetings is a big number. It's a huge number. And it's in like almost every part of India. I, as I'm not a logistician, but I think to myself, that's going to be hard to pull off. Um, so we're incredibly impressed by, by the scope and scale of, of India's uh, presidency. And it, you know, we'll have lots of ministerial meetings, right? We have finance ministers coming just this week. Um, our own Secretary Yellen will be there this week for the finance ministers meeting. So as we look at the, uh, the shared priorities for the G20, a few things that I would like to highlight. Strengthening food security, a big priority for us as well as for India. Advancing global health, another um, area where I think the US and India have had a strong partnership, and we only hope to increase and expand that. Women's economic security, this has been a, a, a priority for the Indian government as it is for our own, and Radhika and Jennifer and I have spent a lot of time the past two days here in California talking about some of the initiatives that we're doing to strengthen women's economic empowerment um, in India. And then last, but certainly not least, kind of for, uh, front on our minds is how do we combat the threat of synthetic drugs? And by that I'm really thinking of the scourge of fentanyl that we have seen in recent months and years. So what do those issues look like? They look like economic prosperity. They look at um, empowering women, upholding the free and open rules-based order that is grounded in international law, addressing the challenges of climate change, food security, global health, all of those 21st century challenges, right? Bolstering economic security through expanded trade and investment, something we spent a lot of time this afternoon and, and this morning talking about at Stanford, and upholding democratic norms and principles. There is so much work that's going on in the U.S.-India bilateral relationship. I want to highlight just a few. We see so much potential for expanded trade and investment. We have and are really excited about the recent announcement by Boeing and Air India for the order of 220 aircraft. That really does reflect the strength of the U.S.-India economic relationship. And we've recently had the visit by Indian National Security Advisor Ajit Doval to Washington, D.C. just a few weeks ago, where he met with our National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, to launch the U.S.-India Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technologies, or as ICET, as we like to call it, because we love acronyms in the U.S. government. <laughs> but um, <laughs> ICET signals really for us all the ways in which we want to partner with India on the technologies of the future. Once again, this is a relationship for the 21st century. So everything from AI, quantum technology, green energy, space, all of that is under this rubric of ICET, led by our national security advisors. We are also working with India multilaterally through the Quad, where we're showing the world that when four democracies work together, we can deliver tangible benefits to our peoples and the region. Whether that's in the distribution of vaccines, in which India has been a tremendous leader, or improving maritime domain awareness, 
that will help reduce things like irregular, unregulated fishing that has an economic drain for countries, or drug trafficking. Um, we are also looking at what more we can do on quad fellowships. We're bringing students uh, as part of the quad to study these 21st century challenges together. But the bedrock of all of this, of this strong U.S.-India relationship, really is the people-to-people -people ties that our two nations enjoy. We have some 4 million plus Indian Americans, one of our fastest growing diasporas, and we have two, over 250,000 Indian students studying in U.S. universities. And that is why addressing the visa wait times for us is critical. Mm -hmm.